Hello and welcome to this video on Soliton Fission. In previous videos on supercontinuum generation and the Raman effect, we saw that the presence of some kind of disturbance can cause an otherwise stable soliton to split into multiple distinct pulses. That's the process known as soliton fission. And today we're going to take a look at how the presence of beta-3 or Raman self-steepening can give rise to this effect. So first of all, this is the base case where we have a fiber with a negative beta-2 parameter, which allows solitons to be formed and some kind of high power pulse that we're launching in. And we can see it, it exhibits some kind of soliton behavior here because it first shrinks into a big powerful spike here and then splits up into multiple sub pulses that sort of split up and merge as we propagate forward in a fairly predictable oscillatory way. So let's see what happens if we change the beta-3 parameter from being zero to now being positive. As we can see, after one meter of propagation, this pulse begins to split off from the main one and drift off to later and later time delays. So how can we understand that this is happening? Well, when you have a big power spike right here, essentially the nonlinearity is going to cause a red chirp in the front and a blue chirp in the back. And beta 3 being positive means that both red light and blue light will propagate more slowly than the carrier frequency. So this very blue shifted and red shifted pulse will begin to lag behind the main one and sort of drift further and further behind as we can see here. And of course if we flipped the sign of beta 3 so it's negative but has the same magnitude, we'd see the opposite thing because beta 3 being negative means that both red light and blue light will propagate more quickly than the carrier as we can see right here. Next we can take a look at the case where we switch the Raman effect on and off. So if we activate the Raman effect we can see that we actually get two instances of soliton fission. There is the first one right here, which clearly has the highest power, and then a secondary one that's less intense. So we clearly see that the pulse also walks off in this case, but instead of happening linearly, we see that it actually seems to accelerate and go faster and faster and faster. And the reason for this is that the Raman effect on a single pulse can actually continuously frequency shift that pulse towards more and more red colors or lower frequencies. And since beta 2 is negative, this means that red light or lower frequencies will move more slowly than blue frequencies. So in other words, this pulse here gets more and more red, causing it to get slower and slower and slower and trail further and further behind the main pulse. And it just so happens that for the parameters I've chosen here, the pulse is intense enough for this to happen twice actually, but with a secondary pulse that's less powerful. And indeed in the spectral domain, we can see that this first branch over here to the left or to lower frequencies, that must correspond to this pulse walking off right here whereas the secondary branch you see here must correspond to the, the second efficient soliton. Next, we can take a look at the case where self-steepening is relevant. So if we activate this, we can see that we actually get soliton fission again, but now the walk-off happens in the forward direction. So this part of the pulse will actually arrive slightly earlier than the main part. The reason for this is simply that self-steepening will tend to cause a biased blue shift on this pulse that's simply because the back part of the self steepened pulse will have a higher slope that's negative that leads to a blue shift. And because beta 2 is negative, blue light will move faster than red light, causing this um, soliton to move off towards the, the left right here. So let's just take a quick look at the animation I presented before with the new information we have available. So up here we see the soliton just evolving normally. And over here we see what happens if we also add in this beta 3 parameter, we can see that the pulse sort of walks off at a linear rate if that happens. And uh, for the case of self-steepening, you can see that if we also include this self-steepening term that depends on the gradient of the field and the power, we get this blue shifted soliton that moves further and further to the left. And finally, for the case of the Raman effect, once the animation here resets, we should be able to see that we get a very intense spike that speeds off kind of quickly and actually accelerates further and further behind. Maybe saying accelerate is a little bit inaccurate because technically what's happening here is that this pulse here is propagating with the same speed, or rather the center is propagating with the same speed, and these parts right here that are going to the right are actually experiencing a greater and greater delay, so they're actually slowing down more and more and more compared to the main frequencies. Oh, and by the way, in this case, this um, expression here just is the convolution between the power of the pulse and the Raman response. It's kind of hard to fit everything on one screen in that case. So anyway, what's the point of all this? Well, the point is that uh, solitons, in some sense, are seem to be very stable and very predictable uh, behaviors of pulses inside of fibers. But in reality, they're only a very special case that 
uh, can be stable when no other disturbances are present. We saw here that both the presence of third order dispersion and Raman itself steepening are actually enough for the pulses to break down after a short amount of propagation. And in this animation here from a previous video, we also see that having a soliton and then adding a tiny amount of amplitude noise is actually enough for the pulse to completely break down as these amplitude fluctuations are amplified as we move forward and then uh, turn the whole soliton into just a big train of uh, spiked pulses right here. So I hope you found this video on soliton fission interesting. Feel free to check out both the description for a link to the code I've used for these simulations and for other notes on fission. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.